Today we're going to talk about kinematic concepts, the terminology of kinematics. Kinematics is simply the study of motion, but it's the study of motion where we don't talk about the causes of that motion, we just talk about what the objects are doing. And if we're going to describe what the objects are doing in terms of their motion, we need to talk about, one, where is it? Two, how is it moving? And three, how is it changing that motion? So if we're going to describe where it is, we need to know how far away and in what direction. And the three basic concepts we need to understand here will be position, displacement, and distance. If we want to describe how fast it's moving and in what direction, we need to talk about speed and velocity. And if we want to talk about how it's changing its speed and how it's changing its direction, then we'll be talking about acceleration. But acceleration, we're going to discuss that in another video. So let's start by talking about the concepts that describe where we are. Position, distance, and displacement. And we're going to do it in one dimension. One dimension simply means that you're confined to move along a line. So you could move left or right, but no other direction. Or you could move east and west, but you can't move north and south at all. So we might imagine the street on which we live. So let's say we live at the origin here at zero. And if we're located here, three kilometers to the right of our home, we'd say that our position was plus three. So our position is really a point in space. But it can also be described a different way because we could draw a vector here from the origin to that point and that would be the vector plus three so that our position would be a vector from the origin to the point in space. But in either case, we have the same information there. We've got the three, how far, and we've got the plus or minus, which tells us to the left or to the right. Now, if we want to talk about displacement, we have to talk about two positions in space. So we'd have to have an initial position. Let's say we were at school, three kilometers to the right of our home. And we traveled to the post office. That would be our final position. Then our displacement would simply be the vector from that initial position to that final position. In this case, the vector would be negative six. Negative because the vector is to the left. Six because the length is six units from plus three to minus three. And then if we want to talk about the distance traveled, that's a little bit different. The distance doesn't include direction, it's just the length of the path traveled. So in going from this initial position right here to this final position, it doesn't mean that we took a direct path between the two. We might have walked way, way up here and then came back so that our distance moved would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten units. Our displacement tells us nothing about the path taken. Only the distance tells us the path taken. Displacement is only based on the initial and final positions. And it all works the same in two dimensions, or three dimensions for that matter. We start with a fixed point that we're going to call our origin, and we place our coordinate axis on that origin. Now, let's say we've got a motion from some initial position right here to some final position over here. Then we can describe those positions as points in space, but we can also describe them as vectors. So we'd have an initial position vector and a final position vector. The vector that goes from that initial position to that final position, this vector here, we'd call that the displacement vector. But the displacement vector tells us nothing about the path taken. So perhaps our path taken is something like that. Then the distance traveled would be equal to the length of that particular path.
In this example, we have a one-dimensional situation. You're asked to determine certain displacements. Pause the video, try the question, and come back for the answer. So from Joe's house to the school, that would be from here to here. And you can see that that's going to be 50 plus 100. It's 150 meters. And I put the plus sign there to say to the right. Now, if we were doing this more mathematically, we'd say that the displacement, delta x, would be equal to the final position minus the initial position. Our final position was plus 100 minus the initial position, negative 50, giving us a result of plus 150 meters. From the school to Joe's house, 100 meters plus 50 meters, but this time to the left, so this will be negative 150 meters. From the school to Fred's house, that would be 100 meters to the right, or plus 100 meters. And from Fred's house to the school, that would be minus 100 meters. Here's another question based on the same neighborhood. Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. Okay, so let's uh, look at the distance first. We're starting from the school, heading over to Fred's house. Well, that's 100 meters. And then we're going from Fred's house all the way back to Joe's house. That's going to be 200 meters plus 50 meters. So that's 250 meters. So the distance is going to be 100 plus 250 equals 350 meters. And notice that we don't put a plus or minus sign in there. Distance is always positive. However, for the displacement, it's a vector. So we need to put in a plus or minus sign. And the displacement only depends on the initial and final point. So we only consider the school and Joe's house here. And we draw a vector from that initial position to that final position. That's going to be 150 meters to the left. So our displacement would be negative 150 meters. Now, we haven't talked about average speed and average velocity, but I thought you might be able to figure that out on your own. The average speed will equal the distance divided by time. So that's going to be 350 meters in 10 minutes, or 35 meters every minute, average speed. The average velocity, well, velocity is a vector. It includes direction and it will equal the displacement divided by time. So our displacement was negative 150 meters, and that was done in a time of 10 minutes. So our displacement would be negative 15 meters per minute. So he would have ended up in exactly the same place if he had traveled to the left at an average speed of negative 15 meters every minute. Now, up to now, we've been talking about average speed and average velocity. What I'd now like you to think about is instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity. How do you think instantaneous speed and velocity would be different from their average values? Pause the video, think about this, come back for the answer. So hopefully you said that instantaneous values are changing. So on your walk, you might stop and talk to somebody or you might slow down as you go up a hill. It's helpful to think of a car trip here because your speedometer on the car, that's going to measure your instantaneous speed. If you want your average speed, you would take the trip odometer reading and divide by the time for the trip. The odometer simply measures the distance that you traveled on a trip. Instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed are going to be almost the same. The only difference is velocity includes that extra information. The only difference is that the velocity includes a bit of extra information. It tells you what direction you're traveling in. Instantaneous velocity is equal to instantaneous speed plus direction. So if I just said 20 meters per second, that would be a speed. But if I say 20 meters per second east, that becomes a velocity. 
I have a couple IB questions for you here so that you can test your knowledge. Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. Okay, so we're looking for the displacement from the initial point P to the final point Q. So our displacement is this vector here. Now, we're looking for the magnitude of the displacement. That means we just want the length. We don't need the direction. And the length, of course, will be 8 meters because our radius is 2 meters. So 4 plus 2 plus 2 makes 8 meters. This question was not well done on IB exams. Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So once again, we're looking for the magnitude of the displacement. And remember, that does not equal the distance. We've got a circular track, as we move along, these are the displacement vectors. So what we're really plotting is the length of those displacement vectors. And you'll notice here, the length, the length of the displacement vectors along here isn't changing very much. All of these lines are about the same length. But you'll see the length is changing very quickly in the beginning. So the correct answer would be this one. Length is growing quickly here, not growing so much here, and then it's getting short very quickly again here. So let's summarize the main points in the video. We first of all talked about the position, and I like to use the symbol x for position. Remember, it can be thought of as a point in space or a vector from the origin. And then the displacement which I usually give the symbol delta x, because that would equal the final position minus the in initial position. And it's a vector going from that initial position to that final position. And then finally, we talked about distance. And I typically like to use a d for distance. And remember, that depends on, on the path taken. So the magnitude of displacement is very different from the distance. We then talked about average speed which was the distance divided by time, and the average velocity, which was a vector and equal to the displacement over time. And you usually see that written as delta x over delta t. And then finally, we talked about instantaneous values, which simply means taken at a moment in time or at an instant in time. And our instantaneous velocity always has the same value as the instantaneous speed. But it includes a little bit more information because it includes the direction. So our speed might be 20 meters per second. Our velocity would be maybe 20 meters per second to the east. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.